2013, we sat down and we thought, how do we make sure that this works for the college? And one of the important things that we had to realize was that this has to fall into the academic department. It can't be something that job placement or support services does, because it's about what gets fed back into the classroom. So the first step was that we had to see that this falls under the academic um, head, myself and the deputy CEO for education and training, and we set targets, and these targets were part of our strategic planning for the year, and we then tasked this um, meeting the targets to our program heads for each particular department. We had workshops with Saki to guide staff on how to implement, and we placed 15 staff in 2013. What we said to staff was that initially when we planned our program, we had a, a prospective large employers who would take a large number of lecturers. And unfortunately, that didn't pan out. So it then again fell onto the lecturer for their own um, planning. This is what we managed in 2013. We sent one English lecturer, fundamental lecturer, and this is quite interesting. He went to a cash crusaders, and he was part of uh, the communication and the advertising on that particular um, outlet. We sent one IT, two electrical, four business studies, and um, I'm going to talk about the Woolworths project. You'll see there, we mention it. We didn't send the N1 to N3 engineering staff, uh, and I'll come back to that. We sent two Educare, two Hospitality, and another Business Studies, and two of our boat building staff. Uh, I'm not sure if you know that False Bay College has a boat building academy, so two of our boat building lecturers went off to a small craft uh, construction company. The Woolworths project was a particular project in the Western Cape where Woolworths took a group of lecturers from each of the colleges in the Western Cape, and they exposed them to a week of retail, or sort of, 101. And it was business studies students as well, or lecturers as well as hospitality lecturers in the food technology department. We had planned two other large employers, but unfortunately, and I think this is something where we've got to still work on it, the large employers are not understanding what lecturer workplace exposure is about. They are unsure about what the lecturer is going to do. The lecturers were given the task five days in the year and it didn't necessarily have to be five consecutive days. And I'll talk more to that in a sec. So we had to do a shift in thinking for 2014. And what we decided to do was we linked our lecturer workplace experience with our student workplace-based exposure. And this has been a phenomenal success. As we speak now, there are students in the workplace for the holidays and lecturers have visited them and spent a day or two with them. The advantage here is that we are finding when you come back into the classroom, the lecturer can say to the student, when we saw that in industry, and immediately now both the lecturer and the student has that industry experience and it's feeding back into what's happening in the classroom. The academic departments take the lead in meeting their LWE targets as well as their WBE targets. And the program heads are now able to start establishing the relationships with the particular industry players. So, for example, I'm going to use our Boat Building Academy as an example. They have now a very good relationship with three or four boat building companies in the Western Cape. So when those boat building companies now need students, they have a person, a contact person that they will phone because they know now who the lecturer is. Um, we meet on a quarterly basis and, and report on our progress. The challenges have been that lecturers need a degree of competence and trust by the employer to be involved in actual production. And that is always a little bit of a problem, safety issues, etc. But the challenge is there to find employers who are open to LWE and WBE. LWEE -E can motivate and energize lecturers. They come back, they've learned something new. The only drawback is you always worry that industry will grab your good lecturers. The more closely related LWE relates to what a teacher teaches, the more the integration in the classroom is just a natural outcome. And the work placement for students and for lecturers can be done together, but students are not watched by lecturers in the workplace. The students go for a consecutive week. 
the lecturer might go the first day and the last day. The first day to introduce and settle the students, the last day to interact with students and see what they've learned. We have learned that this has to be driven by the academic department. It can't be driven by support departments because it's directly linked to what happens in the classroom. And partnerships with industry will improve the teaching and learning process. And we've seen the incredible partnerships that have been developed where the lecturing staff are now making the connections to the role players in industry. And that also lends itself to a lot of other things like guest lecturers and industry having feedback and input into curriculum. Our planning for 2014 is where we've linked the two. And we have a reflection document where lecturers will reflect on for the year, their five days. They will then submit a report on what they've learned, how this has impacted on their teaching, what has added to their curriculum, and what gaps they've identified in their curriculum, seeing what is in industry. And again, I say these are then reported to on a quarterly basis. We've been ambitious for this year, and we are planning to send 45 staff into industry. At the moment, four have already completed, and I think there are about 12 that are currently in this week in industry. And um, we'll provide feedback, obviously, in the new semester to our academic head, then, as to who has finished their placement.